What does it take for us to get into heaven? What does it take for you and me to be able to dwell and live in the presence of Almighty God? This is an interesting question that struck me as we studied four psalms tonight in our journey through Scripture, but two of them particularly struck me, the contrast between Psalm chapter 14 and Psalm chapter 15. In Psalm 15, David asks in verse 1, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill? Now, if you go back to chapter 14, you'll think nobody. Because he says in chapter 14, verses 2 and 3, that there is none who truly understands. There is none who is truly seeking after God. We have all turned aside to our own way. We've all together become corrupt. There is no one who does God, no, does good, no, not one. No one who does good, no, not one, David says. Wow! Who then can dwell with God? Who can be in heaven? Well, in chapter 15, David answers his question by saying, the one who walks uprightly and works righteousness. So if there is no one righteous and no one who does good in chapter 14, and yet there are those, and there's 10 qualities there of, of this person who can abide in God's tabernacle and dwell in his holy hill, how do we go from no, not one to there being people? And that is the beautiful answer of the gospel, is that none of us are worthy. The only way that we're going to get to heaven, the only way we're going to be able to dwell in God's presence is his amazing grace. And that righteousness that we all need is credited to our account, uh, as the New Testament says, by grace, through faith. And then God literally plants his Holy Spirit in our hearts and begins to change us day by day, little by little, from the inside out. So the no, not one can start with you and me as we open up our lives to the amazing grace of God. Who may abide in God's tabernacle and dwell in his holy hill? Each one of us, by grace, through faith. That it is a gift given to us in the person of Jesus Christ his perfect life credited to our account, him taking the penalty for our sins, us being blown away by his mercy and his grace and his love and receiving him into our life as Lord and Savior, receiving the Holy Spirit into our life, being born again. And in that transformation, we go from the no, not one of chapter 14 of Psalms to those who may dwell and abide with God and be with him forever in chapter 15. It is my prayer that each one of us will take advantage of this amazing gift of grace, the righteousness that comes from God alone through Christ and applied to our lives by the receiving of the Holy Spirit, that you and I will be among that group one day, standing on the sea of glass in Mount Zion in glory uh, before the Lamb who was slain for each of us. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. May we each be among those who will dwell with God, see him face to face because of that transformation that only Jesus can do. But it is a gift and he's willing to do it in your life and mine if we are willing. May we each be among that willing. I pray in Jesus' name. Have a great night.